Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on Superman and Lois. So Superman and Lois' first season has officially come to an end. It's all wrapped up. And even though it was only 15 episodes, it did run for a long time, you know, in comparison to that, due to multiple breaks, due to delays in shooting, and just the need for time in post-production, which I think we can all understand that makes the show look better. But yeah, the finale aired in the week just gone past, and as we usually expect at the end of a season of just TV in general, but especially like the superhero or majorly story-based shows, they planted a couple of seeds for stories and plot points leading into the second season. And in this video, we're going to break down what they mean, certain comic connections to them, or that could be connected to them, and various things like that. But of course, let me know in the comment section down below. Just let me know actually your favorite part of season one. That's something I haven't asked, and I'm actually very curious. Like, what did you like the most from season one, one specific part? And just any thoughts on where these setups for season two could, you know, lead in the future. So let me know all your thoughts, opinions, and theories down there in the comments. And of course, if you go on to enjoy the video and you're looking forward to what's coming in uh, season two of Superman and Lois and just want to show your support, why not drop a like on the video to do all that? So as season one's finale came to a close, we had John Henry Irons ready and just content with leaving Smallville and potentially going on to introduce himself to the Earth Prime version of his sister. However, his little... Uh, AI device thingy recognizes someone in the vicinity locking onto his super suit, leading us outside to see a pod coming down from the sky and crashing in front of not only him, but Lois Clark and the Superboys. With Natalie Irons, John's daughter from his Earth, who we'd met in flashbacks early in the season, stepping out and reuniting with her father, only to also see who she thinks to be her mother, that being Lois Lane, standing next to the man or thing that killed her on her earth, that being Kal-El or Superman. So drama, 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 lots of drama. But you might be wondering like, well, who is Natalie Irons? Well, why is she important? Well, technically for the show of Superman and Lois, she's an original character. She's made for the show, but she is clearly a take on Natasha Irons from the comics. Yes, it's not that big of a name difference, and you, you could make the argument, oh, well, why not just call her Natasha, why call her Natalie? But everything is done for a reason. But in the comics, Natasha Irons is actually the niece of John Henry Irons, not the daughter, so you could argue that John's sister on this Earth Prime, who he has been, what, uh, you know, been weighing up whether or not to properly introduce himself to, has a daughter, or will have a daughter, named Natasha. His niece, or will be his niece. But Natalie on the show will slide sort of into the type of character that Natasha is in the comics by the looks of it, or potentially. Now, we of course saw Natalie help her dad build the suit throughout those flashbacks in season one. So we know that Natalie is a smart cookie, which is double, if not triple down on when she manages to get to Earth Prime all by herself. And I'm sure we will see the events from her point of view that took place from that bunker that her father left her in to the point in which she lands on Earth Prime at the end of season one. Whether that involves other characters who feature in the season two story in either a negative or positive manner is another question. But I think most of us wouldn't be mistaken in thinking that her helping with her father's suit and setting up the connections between John and Lois from that Earth would be as far as the character of Natalie would go in the show's like history. But of course, the door is now open for much more in season two. Now, as I said, though there could be a Natasha Irons in the form of uh, the daughter of John's sister, we can assume Natalie Irons on the show will adopt her character from Natasha Irons from the comics. And in the comics, Natasha becomes her own version of Steel. She's not Lady Steel, Steel Girl, Steel Woman or Miss Steel, but just Steel. She's Steel. Now, in the comics, she began as a very gifted uh, tech whiz, I guess you would call it, who would um, help her uncle John develop new technology for use for him out in battle as Steel. But later, she then adopted the Steel mantle, but she actually shared it with her uncle. So we had two Steels out there in the DC universe. But Natasha was a part of the Titans during the early parts of her Steel career and is most well known for that. Though she does do some stuff after that as well. So a big question then leading into season two based off any sort of comic connections there is... Well, will Natalie follow that portion of, Nat of Natasha from the comics and build a suit? Or will we see her be connected to her father's life as still rather than adopt a zero, uh, superhero identity herself? Now, it's probably a flip of the coin, especially for season two, because it, it is hard to tell, to be honest, um, like when we don't know who the villain is for next season. If it's a thread that definitely needs some extra hands to take down, then I could definitely see that happen and see her get her own steel suit of sorts. But yeah, it's hard to tell. Because in season two, I think Natalie's story will, at least the first half of it, at least like a good chunk of the first half, 
will be revolved around more personal matters and what's going on just in Smallville and the people there rather than flying up with a hammer and hitting some with it. Because you got to remember, next season, one of the big things for Natalie, one of the big things for Lois, one of the big things for John, one of the big things for Clark is that next season, Natalie sees her mother again, sees her mother being married to Kal-El. And even John Henry Irons is now going to be finding it even harder to be around Lois with his daughter there. And then we have Lois dealing with a version of her, of her daughter that never was. It's very important to remember Lois had that miscarriage. That daughter would have been Natalie. Sure, it would have been a different looking version of Natalie, but it's still Natalie. So, and this Natalie that's in front of her right now has, you know, has the DNA of her doppelganger. So it's just a bit of a crazy situation. But moving outside of Natalie directly and just into the larger multiverse um, scope as a whole, how did John Henry uh, Henry Irons' Earth survive? Were the evil Kryptonians defeated or did it not survive? Did Natalie get out just in time? Like, will that Earth come into play again? I think that's a big question that we have heading into season two. Like, will there be any like multiverse flashbacks or even multiverse travel to that Earth again? And if there is the flashbacks, I guess we'll see how Natalie got out and maybe anything that took place that leads into this season as well. Maybe the villain is once again from there or it's something to do that sensed, you know, Natalie travel, something along those lines. But speaking of uh, villains, we had Morgan Edge and Leslie Lai. They were kept alive and Todd Helbing, the showrunner for Superman Lois, did say that they will feature again. They were kept alive for a reason. Obviously, we don't know the size of their role next season whether it's in any sort of major way, I'm not too sure. But we know that the villain for next season just won't be Morgan and Leslie again. They're not going to repeat that, but they could play a part in some way, shape or form. But, you know, who could show up and be a challenging threat for Superman and the others? I know a lot of people do want Brainiac. That seems to be a big, um, like, want, I guess, or a big suggestion that people want for the villain for season two. Maybe he could sense activity involving the Eradicator and the stuff that happened at the end of season one. Maybe that's an option. I guess it just depends because Brainiac can be pretty OP. Does it fit the story that they want to do for season two? There's a lot to weigh up there. Another option that is interesting and actually would play off some stuff in season one is actually Kryptonite Man. Some of you might not even know who Kryptonite Man is, but it's very important to remember that Tal Ro was made up for the show. So they could use a really obscure villain and change him a bit, or they might make up another villain. But another option for the show could be Kryptonite Man season two who could be connected as a lingering effect of Project 7734 being a thing on the show. Now, Kryptonite Man is a human subject of kryptonite physiology, which means he's, you know, made of kryptonite, made of, like, his body sort of has, like, kryptonite elements of it. So it's almost like Metallo, but, like, his whole body, if that makes sense, which means him just touching Superman weakens him, and would be a, like, he'd be a very, like, or super tough opponent to deal with. He also has, like, super strength and everything like that. So he'd be very, very difficult to deal with. And also, it's very important to remember, like, Supergirl already did Metallo. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know. It'd be interesting. The, the issue with, I guess, Superman and Lois using villains is that Supergirl used a lot of them. So either they got to retcon that or recreate them in some way. So it's going to be interesting to see if they use a, a villain that already appeared on uh, Supergirl for Superman and Lois Season 2. Now, in regards to Kryptonite Man coming back to him, a couple of people have held that mantle, but they could also make up their own version for the show if they wanted to. It's up to them. I think you've, it's not like a character that everyone loves, so you've got some creative liberties there to do what you want with it. But the last thing heading out of season one into season two that would be on in the back of people's minds, or if not the forefront, might be the first thing you're thinking, that's the Super Sons, or the Son of Superman, or the Sons of Superman and their powers. Will Jonathan remain without powers? Or will he develop different aspects of powers that Superman would have than, than Jordan? Maybe Jonathan learns to fly first, while Jordan just develops the more fantastical and fascinating powers like heat vision, cold breath, maybe some super strength and stuff like that. I guess he already has super strength, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, yeah, I guess he already has heat vision and cold breath. We've seen that before. So develop that more and stuff like that. Or will Jordan just be the only son that actually has powers? And we maybe see Jonathan lean into the more technical and smart side of things being you know more in line with a scientist like his grandfather Jor-El it would be a good way to carry on the legacy of Jor-El especially after his crystal and I guess the, the AI within that crystal was destroyed in season one by Morgan Edge and we've seen him be interested in what John Henry Irons are doing with the suit building and everything like that so we could see him go down that route and you know 
be, like come out as like really really smart you know you think he's just the, the the football jock not much between the ears and then he comes out and, and as jordan's developing these powers jonathan's developing his intelligence so that'd be pretty interesting to see if they went down that route but overall heading out of season one into season two of superman lois they didn't leave us with a crazy cliffhanger they just they just did leave us with a good amount to think about uh, heading into season two and season two probably isn't going to premiere until either like right at the end of January or somewhere at the beginning of February. So we've got a decent wait until we see that. Um, but yeah, I think we're all excited to see how they carry on a really, really strong season one and just yeah, see how they follow up and uh, follow it up in season two. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on what we went over. Uh, any What's your main want, I guess, heading into season two? Let me know in the, that in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.